Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Pastor Bob Wickens from Church of the Open Door. I extend greetings to you and thank you for coming here today on this very special day. I want to start our service. Pardon? I'd like to start with Psalm 147. It says, We praise the Lord because he heals the brokenhearted. He binds up their wounds. And that's my prayer for each of you here today. That the time that we're going to spend now together is a time where you find comfort and hope in the midst of loss. Jesus started out his ministry by saying, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. The very first thing that Christ said, blessed are those who mourn. That's my prayer for each of you here today. That you will find comfort and know that God can help wipe away the tears and comfort you in your pain today. Would you pray with me? Let's bow our heads. Dear God, we're so thankful that we can come to you, Lord. You have the secrets of eternal life. We know you love us, and we pray that your Holy Spirit will be in this room today. May you bless each one who has cared to come and to share our grief and sorrow. May you speak to our hearts, Lord. We ask it in Jesus' name. You know, at a time like this when we lose someone that we love, two things can happen. We can either be mad at the Lord and upset, or it can be a time when we're drawn closer to God. And I pray right now for the latter. Because I want us to experience today just three things. One is I want you to know that God has given us the gift of eternal life. And I want to secondly give thanks for the life of Matthew. He was but 38 years old. And the last thing is in my goal today is that you will find comfort and strength before you leave this building. And so first of all, I do want us to thank God together for the gift of eternal life. I've been a pastor for 50 some years, 54 years. I've been with many people who have died. And so many of them have told me in their last moments of life that they have seen a bright light. One man recently told me he saw Christ coming towards him as he took his last breath. Folks, there is eternal life. There is life beyond the grave. We are not as the animals and the plants of this world. God created us in his image, and there is life everlasting. Yes, the wages of sin is death. We all will die, every one of us in this room. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ his son. It's a gift. The Bible tells us many times when we read scripture, that eternal life is not earned. We don't receive the gift of eternal life by going to church, even though that's good, by reading the Bible, that's good, by prayer, that's great. It's by knowing God and opening our hearts to him, and having faith in him. Christianity is not a religion like Islam and Buddhism and all these other religions that are made up by man. Christianity is a relationship, not a religion, that we can know God and have a personal relationship with him. There's no subject that I could talk to you about today that's more important than where each of you will spend eternity, that you can live forever. Well, that's the first thing I wanted to share. Thank God for eternal life. But the second thing is, we need to give thanks today, and that's why you're here for Matthew's life. 
God created Matthew to be in his image. And even though there were times when his life was broken and when he wandered away from what God's plan was for him, he was still loved of God. He was still a child of God. Psalm 25, verse 7 says, Lord, remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions, but remember me according to your love for your steadfast goodness. Matthew was loved by each of you here in this room, those of you that are gathered here. There's a lot of things in life we don't know and will never understand. We all have days and weeks that don't make sense. Some of you in the last week have had a lot of time where things have not made sense. Sometimes when problems come to us, we are overcome by the problems, the difficulties and the pain. And other times we overcome them Life has a lot of questions, and Matthew's life and death remind us of how fragile life really is. People die for many reasons, and no one in this room can judge what has happened. No one of us knows what went on in Matthew's mind and heart. There's many things we do not know in this life but the Bible does say that one day you will know everything perfectly and clearly. I believe that. My own daughter, Amanda, died five years ago. She was only 30 years of age of a drug overdose in her apartment. I too have many questions and I will see the Lord one day and understand all things perfectly I have many questions and I do know the pain you're going through to lose a child a friend a family member but I've learned in the last five years not to play the what if game if only I had done this if only I had done that I woulda shoulda coulda Satan himself who wants you to be defeated and discouraged. All I can say is put your doubts, your feelings, your pain, whatever you don't know, turn it over to God who loves you. At times like this, I urge you to lean on what the Apostle Paul wrote in the New Testament. He said, God's grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness and that's what I said at the beginning when you lose someone like this you can either be angry or it can draw you closer to God in this weakness in this pain today may you be drawn closer to God his grace is the only answer that we have to the things we don't know but I'm going to spend the rest of our time today together talking about things we do know and first of all, we know that Matthew loved his family. For those of you here, he was a son, a brother, a nephew, a good friend, a family member. But most importantly, he was a child of God. Yes, he was. That's why you're here. Even though he had many struggles, he received love from his family and he gave them love. I was thinking this week about a passage of scripture I always read at a wedding, and I thought, well, you know, today, maybe it's appropriate because it speaks about how you felt about Matthew, how he felt about you. I'm just gonna read a few verses. It's 1 Corinthians 13. Love is patient and kind. Love isn't jealous or boastful. It is not arrogant or rude. It doesn't insist on its own way. It isn't irritable or resentful. It doesn't rejoice at wrong. It rejoices in the right. Here's the part I like the best. Love bears all things. Love believes all things. Love hopes all things. Love endures all things. Love never ends. 
Faith, hope, and love abide. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Matthew had a lot of love in his heart from what I understand. He loved many things. He loved his plants and his herbs. Yeah. He loved his little cactus plants. He loved being outdoors. He loved doing things like hiking or fishing. And he liked his dog, Layla. Somebody once told me that you can tell the real character of a person by how they treat their animals. You know that? The real character of a person is how they treat an animal. But there's another thing I want you to know today, and that's that God is a God of mercy. I believe that God sees into every one of your hearts in this room today, and he understands you better than you really know yourself. And I believe God received Matthew with open arms. And he understands the pain you feel and the loss. Why? Because God the Father lost his own son on the cross. What a death that was. In Romans chapter 8, we read these words. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor things present or things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything can separate us from the love of God. God loved Matthew every single day of his life and every single day, especially those days when he was feeling his worst. Almighty God never stopped loving Matthew. It's one reason why people like the 23rd Psalm. I'm sure most of you have heard it. It's one that starts out, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Wow. One of my favorite parts is right in the middle of that 23rd Psalm. It says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And the last verse of the 23rd Psalm says this. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I'm telling you right now, I know where you're coming from. You're walking through a dark valley. You feel alone. But God promises to be with you. He will. You're never alone. The Bible says, cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Jesus said at the very end of his life, I will never leave you or forsake you. You don't have to walk the lonesome valley by yourself. Jesus said to his disciples the week before he died, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. For I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Heaven is not just a nice idea, something we tell our children out of a Bible story book. God has not left us alone, on our own. We don't have to find the way. God our Father has provided His Son, His only Son, as the way into eternal life. I like the description of heaven that's in the Bible. It says, death will be no more in heaven, because their God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There'll be no more crying or mourning or pain anymore. The former things have passed away. Jesus went through a little village on his way to the cross and a family member, Lazarus, had died. And Martha came up to him and says, Lord, if you'd only been here, maybe my brother wouldn't have died. And Jesus said, Martha, I'm the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. I think most of you in this room know John 3.16. When I was a kid, I actually went to the Indians and game in Cleveland. They used to play at Municipal Stadium down on the lake. Of course,
us toward that balance, now first energy field. One day when I was a child, I saw a banner hanging from the balcony, the upper deck, and it said John 3.16. And I turned to my dad and I said, Dad, what's that? Is that the men's room, the restroom? He said, no, son. That's one of God's promises in the Bible. Someone's put that banner up there. I says, what does it say? And he said, it says this, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And it just amazed me that somebody would put a Bible verse hanging from municipal stadium. Folks, we can put our faith in Christ when we're young, when we're old, when we're on our deathbed. We may believe in God all of our life, maybe near the end of our life, maybe like the thief on the cross for only the last couple minutes or seconds. You remember the thief on the cross next to Jesus? He said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said, today, you'll be with me in paradise. As simple as that. Yeah, the Bible promises, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so what am I saying? I'm saying God loves us, everybody. God loves us. And he will welcome us, whether we're a baby entering his kingdom, whether a young adult, whether you're an old senior citizen doesn't matter God loves each of you in this room and has prepared a place for each of us listen to God's promise in, in John chapter 10 he says there I give them eternal life and they shall never perish today we grieve for Matthew we will miss him very very let me just challenge you today. Put your faith in a good place. In God. In Christ. God loves each of you in this room. And you can know where you're going when the day comes that you are called home. I read a story last year about Dr. Albert Einstein. He was a great physicist, a scientist. And he's now gone from this world. He lived in Princeton, New Jersey. And every day he would take the train to either New York City, north, or down the train track, south to Philadelphia. Every day he rode the commuter train. And one day he got on the train and the conductor came down the aisle, ticket please, ticket please. And he's a senior now, he's 80 some years old. He's starting to lose a little bit of his memory. And he reaches in his pocket and he can't find his ticket. He opens his briefcase and can't find the ticket. He looks in the seat next to him, the crack of the seat, and can't find his ticket. And the conductor's getting very impatient because he's got a whole train full of people to collect tickets. And he says, Dr. Einstein, I know who you are. Everybody on this train knows who you are because you write it every day. And he looked up at the conductor and said, Sir, I too know who I am. But what I don't know today is where I'm going. My prayer for you is that each of you in this room will know where you are going. Jesus' last words upon the cross was this. Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. And Jesus took his last breath. It was finished. I want each of you today to pray a similar prayer. A similar prayer for Matthew. Let us commit him into the Heavenly Father's hands. Father, Receive his spirit. Would you pray with me now? Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we don't always understand what happens in life. We wish we did. But 
we can rest assured that you love us. You gave your son for us on the cross to take our sins so that we might one day have eternal life. Lord, we pray. We pray especially for Matthew's mother, for his family, and for each friend who cared about him, who's here today, and for those that are not today here in this room, those that are watching on the internet. Comfort us, Lord. Give us hope. May we know where we're going. I pray for each and every soul today. Trust Christ. He loves you so much. We pray and ask this now in the name of Jesus, our only hope. And God said, Amen. And may you all say, Amen.